For years, I was on a gigabit network, and for the most part, it was covering my needs, but I believe I've outgrown it. It's time to scale my network from a gigabit to a multi-gigabit. On the desk behind me is not only the items we're going to be using to upgrade my network from a gigabit to a 2.5 gigabit network, but also to install a basic NAS using the Acetor Drive Store 2. Let's get into it. Why are we doing this? Well, there is a few reasons. I've been using the Xfinity gigabit internet for over a year now. And if you know, if you're familiar with the Xfinity internet plans, you'll know that you can actually get more than what their advertised download speed is, which means that if you're on the gigabit plan, you're actually capable of pulling more than gigabit on that download. Now, upload is trash. We all know this. It's okay, but that's just a whole nother frustration. However, I am aiming to break that gigabit download speed and I need to upgrade my network in order to do that because you can't do that on a gigabit network. I'm also needing to install a NAS because I really, really want to get my Plex server off of my main PC because it's actually just an external USB 3 drive and it's really annoying to have to wait for it to spin up every single time I want to do like random actions that access the hard drive and even has to do it on boot up and I'm kind of tired of uh, all that all these little delays from this thing. Now after I do add the NAS to the network it also opens up another door for me to finally offload the bulk of my big storage onto the NAS and pretty much move a lot of that off of the uh, off of my main PC. So I'll have one copy of my current project that I'm working on on my actual PC and a copy of that will go over to the NAS. And then I'll also be backing up those NAS files up into the cloud on my Backblaze account. So we'll have multiple copies of data across my network which is not a bad thing at all. And then of course, because I'm using 2.5 gigabit, I'll be able to transfer files from my main PC over to my NAS pretty quickly without much delay. It won't exactly be the best for reasons that I will get into later in the, in the video, but at the same time, it'll pretty much hit that goal. Now, with all that being said, hopefully the plan is pretty straightforward and simple. We're gonna be connecting to my modem via the 2.5 gigabit port on the back of the Xfinity X1 modem. We're gonna run a network cable all the way to the office here where I have a 2.5 gigabit TrendNet switch that we're gonna be connect connecting to. And then from the switch, we're gonna to connect to both the Acetor Drive Store 2 2.5 gigabit port, which is in the back there, and also to my PC, which will now have a new TrendNet 2.5 gigabit network card. Now, this video is not actually sponsored by Acetor or TrendNet. This is not sponsored at all. This is still my own money as usual. For those who've been around the, the channel for quite a while, you know that I have a TV, a MacBook, and a Linux box that I haven't mentioned yet that are also on the same network. And the reason why those guys are actually not going to get any 2.5 gigabit connections is because they don't really need them. I don't transfer files between any of these systems at all, so there's really no need for them to have that kind of connection. However, in the future, if I do need to expand my network to include them or any other device, I can easily do that. Okay, we've talked about everything. Let's get this set up. Notice how I didn't actually put the screws into the hard drives to properly secure them inside the NAS. I fixed this later.
Everything is now set up. I am plugged into my 2.5 gigabit port on my Xfandy X1 modem. Going into my office where I have the TrendNet 2.5 gigabit switch, which is also plugged into my 2.5 gigabit network card from TrendNet. I just took the cable from the top and plugged it into the bottom of for the new card there. And now I'm going over and also plugged into my NAS here. And you see that my Plex server is sitting on top as I'm not ready to integrate it fully into the NAS yet. I want to make the NAS bigger before I do that. So for now, it's plugged in via USB and that's how everything's working. Now it's time to go ahead and pop it open where it opens up a browser. And now we're on the NAS itself. And here's how the setup looks. I'm going to walk through the steps here to get everything set up. The first thing we have to do is update the OS software. The OS for the NAS is called ADM. And we're going to go ahead and go through that setup process or, or that update process. So let's go ahead and get it updated. All right, after the update you and, re, and you restart your NAS, the update actually automatically restarts it for you. You now choose your skin, either light or dark, and also whether you want to do a custom advanced setup or a one-click setup. One-click setup is good enough, good enough for us here. And now we're also going to go ahead and sign up for a Acer Store account and also set the RAID to RAID 0. I don't need RAID 1 or anything like that. Uh, RAID 0 is good enough for me. All right, and once you got all your account stuff set up, it's time to go ahead and initialize the RAID. So now the NAS is going to go ahead and start setting up the RAID 0 that we selected. Obviously, when I expand this NAS, I get an updated unit that allows me to have more drives and I'm ready to do that. I'm not going to sit on RAID 0. I'm probably going to go to RAID 1 or RAID 5, something like that. But the RAID in and of itself is not a part of my backup plan. It's just the way that I want to set up the NAS for now. And it's the entire uh, plan that we already talked about before. That is my backup plan, backing up to the cloud, backing things up to the NAS and all that kind of stuff. If data is lost in any one area, I'm going to have a copy of it. So I'm not really worried about which kind of RAID I have set up right now. All right, once the RAID is initialized, you can go ahead and set up your warranty part. You know, so go ahead and register your NAS so you can be able to do warranty things for it. Um, I'm just gonna blow through this. All right, now we are finally in the NAS. We have the whole system set up. I'm gonna go ahead and play around with this a bit, figure out how the OS is, figure out how I want things to be, get some apps installed and stuff like that. And then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna walk you through my setup on this NAS. Everything has been set up for a week or so or more now, um, about, about a week or more now. Um, I'm kind of comfortable with how this is set up. We, we're not running too much on this NAS, but um, we're going to walk you through a few different things. First and foremost, uh, a lot of the fun happens between these two areas, but I'm not actually using the services, uh, but between services and settings, you can do a lot of different stuff with this NAS. And I do have some extra apps uh, installed down here. I'm going to take a brief look at those. Um, so first and foremost, when it comes to the apps, the, the apps in general, a lot of these come pre-installed on the NAS already uh, for the Acer Store Drive Store 2. But you also have your App Central here, which allows you to really uh, do a lot of cool things with this NAS, including running a full-blown web server off of this NAS. You see you have PHP 7, you have Docker down here, WordPress. You can really use, uh, you can really pretty much make this NAS do whatever you really need it to do um, if, you, if you want. Iron Wolf, Iron Wolf Health Management is actually for those who do have the Seagate Iron Wolf drives. Um, this will allow you to have some extra health data um, available to you in the store, the storage manager. So coming out of the apps, App Central, where you install your apps, you can go over to your storage manager. You can see you can check the health of your RAID. Um, remember, we're running RAID 0, maximum capacity right now. So this is my 8, 8 terabyte and 4 terabyte. It's telling me the RAID is healthy. Coming down into the drive area, we see the application that we install, the Iron Wolf Health Management gives us this icon and also gives us this Iron Wolf Health status here with more details if we really wanted it. I don't really need this much insight into my drives, but it's nice to have it. Coming out of the storage manager over here, uh, we have our Plex Media Server, which is running off of our external devices. So let's pull up our external devices here and you can see our USB 2 is here. It is running fine and once again status ready and so you can tell that the the drive is is doing okay no issues there 46 percent full like i said i will be expanding or um putting the nas putting the plex 
server directly on the NAS, which is not running right now. It's not like that right now. It's running through a USB, but it will be on the NAS eventually, a, a plan of mine. Opening up the settings, um, you have a lot of stuff going on here, but uh, mostly you have your network uh, settings as here. You have uh, the ability to install SSL certificates via your certificate manager, the ADM update to, to kick off manual updates for your OS uh, on the NAS, which is called ADM once again, as we said before. Network recycle bin, when you delete things on the NAS, this is where you will click on it and you can manually empty the recycle bin, but it does empty on its own as well. Uh, scheduling for certain services that you need to run on schedule. You can set up those those different things here. I really don't know what you're doing what with this right now, but pretty sure there's a, a a reason for that. Under manual connect and click on easy router. This is a pretty special thing where you have uh, a way to do port forwarding. Now remember that this works exactly like Windows firewall. So you can open and close and you know port forward all you want via this software, but you still have to go onto your modem, onto your actual router and open up those ports in order for it to actually work. Um, but still it's uh, extra line of security. It's nice that it's a nice to have. Like I said, there's a lot of stuff you can do in the settings here. Um, so you're going to spend a, a good amount of time here, depending on what you're trying to do. Uh, down here in the cloud backup center, this is where I spent a lot of time setting up the, my backups to the cloud for my back blaze and my B2 buckets. So I set them up here. This one aired out when AWS went down uh, recently, and um, this will run again and be just fine the moment it it uh, it tries to connect to Backblaze. Uh, seeing as AWS is um, once again back up and running, so this error will go away. Um, this one here is for my YouTube stuff, and all of this is working okay. The upload is not very fast at all. I am being capped out around four or five megabits per second uh uploading not that fast um i wish it was faster the reason why that's happening is because the resources that this application takes up and the amount of data i'm trying to push into those buckets is utilizing over 90 percent of my memory on the nas the memory then this nas is a basic nas it only has one gig of memory so um it's not a lot actually so it it wipes out my memory every time the uh this backup kicks off and it, the utilization is just too high and it's tanking my uh, network speed specifically on the NAS, not my entire network, just when it comes to the NAS, is utilizing so many resources that the NAS can't push my upload um, as fast as it should. So and when I update this, this uh, NAS to a better one that allows for SSD cache and more memory, that problem will be solved. Uh, but for now, this is working, so I'm still happy. Coming to the data sync center, this is where I'm making a third copy of my OneDrive. My OneDrive is primarily used on my PC, uh, my main system, but I'm backing up all those files on the NAS as well because those are a lot of important files, text files, documents, school, uh, old school files, things of that matter. Uh, things for both me and my wife is in my OneDrive. So I want to make sure I have a third copy of that. And of course, beyond the, uh, the Plex server, which I have set up here, which uh, has all my movies and everything in there, and that's all set up and running great. That is pretty much the bulk of my system set up for, for my NAS. I don't really use a lot of the applications here. Um, one thing I do like is I do have a shell in the box where I can open up a terminal in the browser and do command line functions for on my NAS whenever I need to. That, that is really, really handy. And of course I have the file explorer here that has uh, all these files. This is not where my Plex server is. It's down in here. Um, but in the public folder is where the bulk of the, fold, the files that I want to share across my network um, is stored in the public folder. And then of course, all these other folders are here either because I created them manually or because the apps that I install created the folders for themselves. And that's pretty much it. Uh, pro tip, if you're trying to figure out if why things are not working exactly where you want them to, or why think why the NAS is not performing the way that you want it to. Check your activity monitor. That's a really quick way to see what processes is running and what things are are um what what things are taking up resources on your NAS and gives you a good insight into what could be causing your NAS to have performance issues kind of quickly. We can't forget that we also wanted to break that gigabit. Uh, speed barrier. So let's check our setup. We are on 2.5 gigabits on our network full through. Let's hit the go. Did we do it?
and we did so now instead of being hitting the limit of around 960 or 950 something like that we are over our gigabit and that is awesome so to recap we were able to upgrade our gigabit network to a 2.5 gigabit network this allowed us to download at speeds higher than uh, one gigabit which is pretty awesome we also were able to install a nas we used the acer tour drive store 2 to install a basic nas onto our network which allowed us to uh, offload a, a ton of our media files youtube videos and even uh, move our plex server our external drive pretty much what it was um, over to that nas and now all of it is sitting on its own system we have all of that backing up to our backblaze b2 buckets you saw how i had that set up on the uh, ace2 drive store to nas so everything is running smoothly and because we are running on a 2.5 gigabit network i can move files from my pc over to the nas in a relatively quick uh, time much faster than i could before on our gigabit network which had its own limitations when moving files between devices so this is all in all a success I hope you guys did get a lot of information from this. I hope you got a, got a lot of info when it comes to setting up your NAS systems or if you did pick up the Acer Tour uh, NAS and hopefully this helps you with your setup process or in just learning about NASes and networks in general. You know, the basic stuff because that's pretty much all I can really teach you. Uh, so uh, I hope you did get a lot from this. Hope you did enjoy. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button down below and comment or anything else you want to see about this NAS or anything else in general as far as tech is concerned. And don't forget to subscribe so you can see more videos like this all the time and ring that bell so you can know when I upload. All right. You have a good one. Bye.